Okay, I'm going to go through the steps to create a C-grid uh, for this NACA 0012 airfoil. I'm going to choose to do an H-type topology as opposed to an extrusion. Uh, maybe I'll save that for another video. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is you see we've got the, the NACA 0012 geometry sitting here, uh, the database curves. I'm going to put some connectors on these curves. We're going to modify the distribution of points on those connectors and then build up the rest of the topology. And I'm going to get you pretty much all the way there. And if you want to modify the distribution on the resulting connectors, um, I can show you how to do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to, I'm going to make all my connectors have the same dimension, meaning they're all going to have the same number of points. So to do that, I'm going to change the default dimension to 50. So now any connector that I create from here on out is going to have 50 points on it. Okay, so I'm going to grab the database entities. Just did a control A to select all. Now I'm not going to talk too much about this mask panel. Again, this just does targeted selection. So checking the database mask means I can only select database entities. I'm going to go back and forth to that panel quite a bit. Okay. All right, so I've got my uh, database entity selected. I'm going to put connectors on them by pushing the toolbar button, connectors on database entities. It's automatically going to create a, a single connector for each entity. In this case, it's created two connectors, one on the upper surface and one on the lower surface. Okay. I'm just going to grab those connectors. and I'm going to turn the points on, the display style to points on, so you can see the distribution of points along these connectors. Now, the leading edge needs to be resolved a little bit. It's pretty faceted. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the spacings mask, the spacing constraints mask. I'm going to select the two spacings as the leading edge. I'm going to change the value to 0 0.001. Okay. So now I've pulled points <coughs> towards the leading edge to resolve that leading edge curvature. I'm going to do the same thing at the trailing edge. So I'm going to grab those spacing constraints, and I'm just going to make it 0 0.01. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the distribution of points on my connectors. Now you can adjust those if you'd like. You can make the spacing tighter on the leading edge or coarser or what have you. Um, this is kind of what I'm, I chose to do for the, uh, for the demo. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my branch connector, okay? To do that, I'm just gonna show you um, an interesting thing. It, you, it, it's pretty cool how you can copy and paste spacing. So I'm gonna show you that process. So Again, when I create this connector, I'm just going to pick the, the end point here. I just decided to do a two-point curve, okay? And I'm doing uh, creating a connector from this point. And instead of picking a point in the display window, I'm going to go to an X location of 20. Okay, so that's 20 units downstream. All right, so that's going to be our branch connector, our wake connector. And just to make it easier, again, I'm going to turn on the display of points. You can see what the points look like. All right. So rather than just grab that spacing value, so ultimately what I want is I want the spacings to be the same at the trailing edge. Okay. For the upper and lower surface, they're the same, but this weight connector is a little bit larger. Okay. So instead of just grabbing this and entering 0 0.01, I'm going to show you something pretty cool. So if I select one of these spacing constraints and copy that spacing, so edit, copy, and click on this guy, I can go edit, paste spacing. And it'll automatically paste that spacing value to that connector. So what's, what's interesting though, is if you select multiple spacing constraints, if you do the copy, it's actually gonna average them. So that's pretty nice if you wanna quickly get all the spacing values in a kind of this node junction to be the same. You could basically grab all the connector or all the spacing constraints there, do a copy and then paste spacing and it'll kind of paste the average to all of those. So again, just something pretty handy so you don't have to type uh, a value all the time, okay? All right, so everything is pretty much set. I'm just gonna leave the, the other end unspecified. That spacing is kind of backed out of the, the distribution function uh, along this connector, which is a hyperbolic tangent, and then that spacing value that I specified. All right, so for the rest of this, I'm just going to create uh, my topology. Now. I'm going to do something else in the defaults panel. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the beginning delta s to my boundary layer spacing, okay, which is 1 e to the negative 5. Okay. I'm going to do this for the creation of these uh, next few connectors. 
So why would I go do this? Well, basically when I create these connectors, okay, I'm going to create it from here, okay, up to, you know, the extent of my far field, which I'm going to give a Y of 10. Okay? So same X and Z value, just a Y of 10. And I'm going to do the same thing from here to minus 10. Okay. If I grab those connectors, I'll show you exactly what's kind of happened here. This was my start point when I drew those connectors. In my defaults panel, I said, okay, I want all the connectors I create to have a dimension of 50, so they all have 50 points. But I also said I want the distribution to be such that the beginning spacing is 1e e to the negative 5, which is going to be my boundary layer spacing. So if you imagine what our topology is going to look like, is we're going to have an H grid here, and it's going to wrap around, okay? We're going to have kind of a, a grid in the front and then an H grid here in the back. And so this is going to be basically controlling our boundary layer spacing. And so by picking that as my start point and drawing out, and with the defaults I have set, the distribution's already been specified. So I don't have anything to do, which is pretty nice, okay? But I'll go and show you how to modify that later on if you're interested. Okay, so I'm going to basically do the same thing over here at the trailing edge. Okay, so I'll grab that point. I'm going to go to an, a Y value of 10 and go from this point to a Y value of negative 10. Okay. And just because we're doing it with all the connectors, I'm just going to turn on the points for everybody. All right. So now I'm going to turn that default off, okay, by going back and setting it to zero. All right. So now I'm just going to draw normal connectors and I'll change the distribution on them manually. I just wanted to kind of show, kind of illustrate how you can set up the defaults and have it affect all the entities that you create afterwards. Okay, so that's kind of handy for, for these types of topologies. So I'm just turning off that beginning spacing. So now it's going to be unspecified, just an equal distribution of points along the connectors. So I'm going to kind of close these off. So I'm going to create a couple of connectors here. Right, and then I'm going to create my C, my C connector, kind of my semicircular connector. I'm going to choose this button. This is the curve creation tool. Make sure it's on connector, and then this guy is circle. So I'm going to pick that, and then I'm going to choose two points and an angle. This is the easiest way to do this. I'm going to pick this point, okay? I'm going to pick that point, and the angle is going to be 180 degrees. All right, so now it's time to fix the distribution of points on all those guys. So I'm just going to, again, grab all the connectors and turn their points on just to kind of illustrate this a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to create, I'm going to grab these four connectors, okay, grab these guys and these guys. So those four connectors, and I'm going to assemble domains up here in the toolbar, okay. So you can see what the domain would look like since I haven't modified all of the spacing values that I need to modify. Okay, I'm going to just grab the, uh, these connectors and do the same thing down here. All right, so I'm, let's just fix these two domains while we're at it. What, what's the best way to fix that? Well, we need to modify the spacing constraints on these two connectors that we just created. So I'm going to grab that spacing constraints mask and basically what we need to do is we need to tighten up the spacing this end. What value should we use? Well, the easiest value to use is the value that we used here on this branch connector. So why don't we just grab that guy and copy it. So I'll copy that and then grab these two and paste the spacing. Edit, paste the spacing. There you go. You get a nice perfect orthogonal grid. Okay. All right. So now what about this domain that we need to do out front? Well, this one we're going to actually have to assemble using the assemble special command. And the reason is, is one of the edges, okay, a structured domain consists of four edges, but each edge can consist of multiple connectors. Sometimes pointwise can't figure out how to assemble those complex edges, okay, for that structured domain, All right? The other thing is, is we need to make sure that the opposing edges have the same number of points, which I can tell you they do not, All right? One edge this edge right here has 50 points. The opposing edge is actually going to be the two connectors on the airfoil. Those each have 50 points. Okay, so 
we're not going to be able to create a structured domain until we get the dimension on this connector correct. All right. So the easiest way to do that is just do a little math in your head. All right. This connector has 50 points. This connector has 50 points, but they share a point. So 50 and 50 is 100 minus the shared point is 99. Okay. So grab this connector and type in 99. Or the other thing you can do is grab this connector and go grid dimension. Okay. Now we're entering one of the advanced menus for the dimensioning system on the connectors and copy. So I'm going to go down to this frame that says copy from, click that, and I'm going to grab this connector and this connector and say copy dimension. Copy the dimension, click OK. Now this connector has 99 points. All right, so that's an easy way. Sometimes, sometimes your edges are so complex that you have multiple connectors, all right, and adding them up can be a little bit tedious. So really the easiest way to do it is just copy the dimension. It's automatically going to do the math for you uh, and apply the dimension to that connector. All right, but you notice what I'm going to do, actually, let me build the domain first and then I'll show you what needs to be done. So like I said, we're not going to be able to assemble this domain. If I grab these connectors, Okay, all the connectors that are going to create this domain and click assemble domains in the toolbar, it's not going to make it. It's going to say zero domains created, five connectors unused. Okay, it's because one of the edges is too complex. So we're going to go to the menu bar. So I'm going to go to create, assemble special domain. And now you can see this is our, you know, kind of the, the edge topology of a structured domain. Again, the structured domain consists of four edges but each edge can have multiple connectors. So I'm going to basically define the structured domain. I'm going to turn off autocomplete so I can basically walk through the entire thing. So it's asking me to start on edge one. So I'm going to make this edge one. All right, it's giving me an orientation. Let's say next edge. I'm going to pick this connector. All right, that's edge two, which has 99 points. So that basically means that this edge right here, our next edge is going to have to have 50 points because it's opposite this edge that has 50 points. The one on this side is going to have to have 99 points, right? So a nice little tool here to help you uh, define these structured domains. All right, so I pick that. I'm going to say next edge. Pick this guy. All right, so 50, 50, 99. Now we need another edge that has 99 points, which is the airfoil. That guy and that guy, all right? We've got our structured domain. But you notice the spacing is a little bit off. You see these lines kind of coming out at an angle here. They're not really orthogonal to the boundary. Um, what we need to do is we need to adjust the spacing. Okay, so I'm going to grab that spacing constraint. We need to tighten up that guy, that guy. So what value should we use? Well, we should use the same value that's on the opposite side. So basically this value. All right, so if I grab that spacing constraint and copy it, edit, copy, I'm going to paste that value here and here. Edit, paste spacing. And there you have it. We have our C grid for this airfoil. Okay, so this C grid consists of three domains one, two, and three. All right? So that's how you go about doing that. Now, just to, I'm going to introduce something. Um, kind of a little bit more advanced, and that's being able to modify the distribution of points along connectors, okay? So I'm going to grab, the easiest way to do this is I'm going to grab these four connectors, because these are what are controlling the boundary layer spacing, okay? So I'm going to go grid distribute, again, another menu bar command. This is going to bring up a panel that gives us more options than just what you'll find along the toolbar. And going to the Functions tab, you'll see we have several different types of distribution functions. The default is hyperbolic tangent. Okay, that's how the, the points are distributed along a connector. And you can change the default, again, in the default panel. So you can see any, any connector we create is going to have a hyperbolic tangent distribution function. But you can change that. Or you can change it after the fact. Okay, so for example, maybe you want to have a growth type distribution function. So you go to the growth checkbox and you can say, okay, how many layers you want, what's the growth rate, and things like that. Okay. So it's pretty handy, and I'll leave that as a kind of an exercise to the user to go and modify the distribution function along the connector. All right. 
So really the last thing is setting up your boundary condition. So, you know, you'd, you'd pick your solver. Um, let's just you leave it as CGNS and go to set boundary conditions. First thing you need to do actually is set it to 2D mode. Okay, so CAE set dimension 2D and then CAE set boundary conditions. And you'd have like a, you know, boundary condition for the inlet. So we call that inlet. You can type. You can change the, the type to inlet or something inflow. And you basically go through and set up the boundary conditions for the rest of the grid system and then export to the solver. And to export, basically you just grab all the domains and go file, export, CAE, and you can export it to your solver. Okay? So that's how you create a C grid and, and go and modify it if, you, if you'd like to do that. Okay? So just zoom in here so you can kind of see what we have going on. Nice boundary layer mesh for our NACA 0012 RP.